Welcome back to Psych Your Way to Success with Claire and Heather. And uh, we are back to talk about burnout. And I think it's absolutely just in time because what do we have right now? We have the lovely holiday season. <laughs> I think it, it is like the biggest drive um, for burnout right now. Um, so essentially, we're going to have a conversation about um, burnout, things to be mindful of, and maybe a couple strategies on how to do your best to mitigate that that real, real tough time of holiday holiday burnout. So just to kick it off, I do want to bring up, and Heather and I kind of talked about it briefly a moment ago before we started recording, is how much I'm still surprised at traffic during holidays. It's like everybody comes out of the woodworks. Everybody has to do their last minute shopping, which I must say, I'm one of them. I don't know. When do you do your shopping, Heather? Do you do? Like... I mean, I wish I was that organized that I got it done. Like I, I did a lot on Black Friday, you know, just like cool. little things. Right. So I did get a lot done. And generally in, in past years, I've been done with Christmas shopping and everything by December 1st. That's always been my, that's always my goal. Wow. But for some reason this year just came so quickly. I don't under, I, it's. There are years like that. All of a sudden, it just like <laughs> pop up on you. And yeah, like, bam. yeah, I'm mostly done. I I don't know about you, but I don't make I Christmas isn't as big of a thing for me. I we celebrate Christmas, so like it's not like I mm -hmm. go overboard with it, especially being a single mom. You know? <laughs> I just I kind of like oh, I always man. do a need, a want, and would like to have present for my kids. So we do three presents. So it's it's not like I'm like wrapping and buying a bunch of things. So it's, and I don't have the, the headache of the office. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this burnout thing. Because I remember when I was doing holiday gifts for the different practices or people that we had to go out there. I mean, this is why I, by December 1st, I would be done with all my You'd Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to be organized at that point for sure. I know that, I mean, I was the opposite of you. I, w I was a single parent that was 100% of the time overcompensating for how um, I didn't get all the time around my son because I was usually working two, a uh, minimum of two jobs. So it was <laughs> it was me spending a lot of time and whatever money, whether it was me at the, you know, dollar store or me just if I could fill his stocking and then fill the tree, that was a goal. It like it was I can't I can't condone it. I'm just saying I fell into that little uh, that little trap, I would say. Uh, we do celebrate Christmas as well, but the holiday season, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but I don't, I hate going to the grocery store. I hate like. I avoid Costco like the plague until the holidays are over if I can. But I got, I remember one year I got hit by a cart because people were shoving their way into the store so vehemently that they were like hitting the, and it, you know, it hits right in the back of the heel where it hurts the most. And I was like, are you kidding? Like, why are, this is the wrong holiday. Like, not that it's any time is good for it, but you know, this is for love and cheer and you're yelling <laughs> and screaming instead. I don't know. I just, but it's because we're burnt out. We don't have the bandwidth. We don't have the patience anymore. Exactly. And there's so many things coming at you. If you think about it during the holiday season, you have like your, if you have kids, you have all your kids stuff too. So it's mm -hmm. like, not just like buying presents or like, whatever else it's also the classroom parties and the um the friends classroom performances the friends. and then buying for the friend uh, i mean it's just even just that one little thing is a lot and then you have all the office parties and the Oof. this and the that and it's just like i mean i i guess that's one nice thing about being in school i don't have any of that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I will I will say that like if you're not the one getting invited to an office party, like if you're not it's not your office party. I've been invited to some office parties and I'm just like, "Oh my gosh. 
I'm so glad this isn't mine. <laughs> like, for the first time in my entire adult life, it's not my office party. This is great. This is, yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a catch-22 because I'm like, I, I, I'm going to zero. <laughs> that's fair. Which, it's kind of like, kind of nice and kind of like, oh, and then that's why I think the holidays just came up for me because I'm like, there's not, I'm, anyway, but I do think that burnout is an important aspect, not only just for yourself to be aware of it, but also as a leader in an organization, like understanding that everything now is a little bit stressed because like you said, you go to the store, which normally is like a mundane task. It becomes an event. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, and it doesn't matter what store you're at. It could be mm -mm. the grocery store, Costco, which I avoid the, like the plague that's Instacart is like the best thing on earth. It is <laughs> of partnerships, of, you know, <laughs> mental health. <laughs> exactly. Of, honestly, for me, it saved my wallet half the time because I'll just roam aisles. I'm that guy. So yeah, go ahead. Exactly. And so I think that as a leader, being aware that right now, not only is there a time constraint, because there's a lot of pressure on everybody's time. There's also yeah. everything you're doing feels heavier and harder because mm -hmm. there are lots of lines and people are stressed. Like you go to, I don't know if you're a Starbucks girl, but if you are, like you go to Starbucks and there's so many people in line and people are more agitated because they have so much more to do mm -hmm. and so much more time constraints on them that they're, mm -hmm. it's not that they're, but they're now needing more coffee <laughs> because oh, they're they so more exhausted. Shots and they need the food because they haven't been able to eat anywhere. I live in the coffee capital of the world. I live in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State. So every coffee stand is a drive through and it's like every quarter of a block, you have another one. So it's kind of handy. And even still, there's a line in every single one of them. So that tells you something for sure. Exactly. And so I think as um business owners or leaders or managers or even just like um colleagues we mm -hmm. should we we need to be aware of that and more um i'll say patient i think there is a little bit of patience and providing um, grace thank you yeah exactly i think i think you nailed it i think this is one of those things that uh this time of year especially as a leader in your organization, or even if you're not a leader, if you're, um, if you feel like this is the place that you want to be providing grace to somebody, your colleague, anybody around you, whether it's out <clears throat> in the grocery store, or if it's in the workplace, it's, it's such a change. It's such a difference to provide somebody with a smile rather than a scowl. You know what I mean? Like it can change that one person's entire day or their perspective yeah. or their attitude or their frustration. And even if they're being rude, that person that hit me in the back of the heel, don't get me wrong. There's that moment where it passes through your mind where you just want to yell at them and be like, what the heck? Why would you do that? And I just like, I, I just remember like if I had my way to do it over again, I would have loved to turn around and smile at them, like in not the condescending sort of way, right? Like just to be like, hey, happy holidays. Do you need to get in front of me? Are you in a, like, I don't know. I'm not in a hurry. Like, go for it. Um, I'm certainly not in a hurry enough to hit somebody and not apologize. But I guess like the whole point is, if you can just find space to do that, and if you're finding yourself um, stressed, to the point where you don't feel like you can maybe ask yourself why right like take that second and breathe and think right exactly like i think self-awareness is the key you know mm -hmm. seeing where you're at a, a lot of times during the holidays also you you kind of stop working out you stop getting in your routine right and all these things that you would normally do like even drinking water you're so busy and you're so on such time constraints you forget to drink water <laughs> and That's so all such of, a great point right and so all of these things become 
add to the burnout because now we're not taking care of our body. We're not working out. So it like relieves some of the stress because we have no time and we're um, constantly doing something every single night. I mean, I don't even have an office party, but I, every night is booked for the last I, two weeks and I, I'm tired. You know? <laughs> yes. It's um, kind of, I, I remember when we had Courtney on, um, she was our, our resident therapist more or less, but, um, she talks so much about like trying to figure out where in the body, because it is so interconnected, where in the body, are you feeling that stress for you? And like being able to sit with that and figure it out is really, really, I think super important. So I agree. I, I like the idea of making sure that we are mindful of our own stress levels. Um, to be able to take time for ourselves, even if we don't think with, that we have time, because that's the biggest thing that we love to say to ourselves. It's the biggest lie that we have ever told ourselves is that we don't have time uh, for ourselves. And yeah. I promise you, you need to, and you have to, and you can. There's plenty of time as long as you make it. It really is just a matter of a choice. Um, and I, I say that under pretenses that I have spent the majority of my life saying I don't have time. So like, being able to find it now is um, what at first felt like privilege, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And so I think that taking the time to even just breathe, <laughs> I, I was like, you know, like I think sometimes um, breathing heals a lot of ailments as well. So it's like just the, these simple things of like, we're holding our breath and we don't even realize it, or we're not taking those deep breaths. Um, I know it, it's a pretty obvious thing when you're working out, like all of a sudden you realize like it's hard to breathe and you're like, oh wait, I just, I'm not breathing. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. But I think also in your day-to-day -day life, it's important to like take time out to just pause and breathe. Yeah, I, I, um, I definitely agree. So for sure, as you see the, the holidays ramping up and as we get closer to, say, the 25th of December or if we're getting closer to the, you know, New Year's, I know that it's going to be really, really hard um, workplace or otherwise, especially if you're working on the holidays, which can be really stressful for, for some people knowing that they're missing out on time with family. Um I guess my question to you, and I'll try to figure out an answer while you're answering maybe is <laughs> <laughs> what are, what are some of the steps that you take to make sure that you're, you're mitigating, you know, these, these pitfalls and these challenges of burnout, especially during the holidays. Do you have, do you have any? Yeah. I mean, it, it's such a good question because I would say my number one thing is just trying to be more aware. And mm -hmm. I, I think you feel it in, in your gut that like you're getting, I always try to notice when I'm getting irritated about things that I don't normally get irritated about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I always, I like, I always tell my kids, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not mad about this. I'm just stressed, mm -hmm. you know? Cause like, it, it's like, I really work hard at recognizing that. And I think that there is some value to just being aware. And mm -hmm. um, once you're aware, you can adjust it. But that's why I felt like this was such an important topic to talk about, because awareness is actually the key to yeah. even try to mitigate. But then I think it's also drinking water. I love that like so many people are carrying around those Stanley cups. I don't know why that's like such a big thing for people. I, I, I don't, but I love that idea because even if you're like just carrying it reminds you to drink water, you yep. know? And so I think like, I would say be, just being aware, drinking water. And then I really do believe in breathing. And I think when we start feeling irritated, if we just take three deep breaths, it like calms our nervous system. It helps us just like deal with whatever situation we're in. I mean, mm. I would love to say you should work out, but sometimes that's just not a possibility when right. you're, you have time constraints. Yep. 
I was going to say I have friends that work at six o'clock in the morning, getting up with their kids and doing a workout before they go to work or post work just isn't an option. So yeah, for sure. I can appreciate that. Um, I would say, I, I think for me, at, along with all of those, I think that carving out time and putting it in my calendar, time for me. And I would I say that. like, is such an important thing because I am one of those people that will overbook, double book themselves to the point <laughs> of exhaustion. And I've been doing it since, you know, my son was very young and he's 24 now. So I have a pattern and I know it, uh, but I, I think it's so important to make sure that we have that um, dedicated time for ourselves. And I'm talking about, it's in my calendar for one hour, I get me time and it's whatever however I want to spend it, but nobody else gets that. Like the phone goes on, do not disturb. I either sit on my porch or I have a massage or like, if I'm really lucky <laughs> and all of those things, they line up so that I can make sure that nobody gets to interrupt me during that time. So if you have kids or if you have like fur babies are my safe space, so my dogs are definitely involved in my me time, whether it's a hike or a jog. Um, those things are a hundred percent me. So, and it's, it's really important. And again, I have to put it on my calendar. It may not be every day, but it's definitely on the calendar for me to be able to do. Um, I think I started out once a week and then I started gradually adding more time in my weekday so that I stair step my way into at least three to four days a week. I love that. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> Adding it to your calendar. Cause you're mm -hmm. right. If you don't add it to your calendar, it is not going to happen. <laughs> well, then you're going to end up cleaning or doing laundry or something. Yeah. I'm talking about doing the therapeutic things. That is just you relaxing. If it's meditation, if you find meditation in that time period, great, because that adds into your, you know, breathing techniques. And it is amazing how I, I never thought I'd be the person that would say that I love meditation. Um, but I turned out to be that person right before I would go to bed, I'd spend 10 minutes and that would be my time to meditate. And oh my gosh, it changed my world. It's crazy how it can change everything. So I have, I have a temper. <laughs> it is a downfall of mine. So yeah, it was, it was one of those things where I needed it for sure. It was fun. I love that. And you know, it actually, I'm like, I need to write this on my calendar today. <laughs> Add in me time. But I do agree with you that meditation, especially right before bed is so oh. big. A lot of times we're on our phone or we're this or that. Like, um, I definitely try to put my phone down because I think mm -hmm. your phone creates burnout because as well, right? Um, because instead of just relaxing and going to bed, we're looking at emails and we're looking at our calendar and we're on social media or whatever it is. And it causes a ton of stress and anxiety unnecessarily. I agree. I mean, I think they've actually proven it. So I, I don't want to pull out anything that I can't say a resource to right now. But I will say that I've read several things that either have found a high correlation or causation and definitely has to do. And I mean, blue light, all of that stuff adds to your inability to fall asleep. And don't forget to, um, I have the, I'm not plugging aura ring or anything, but I have one after getting the aura ring and you have one too, I believe after I getting the aura ring and watching how my sleep changes. Oh my gosh. It's a, it's shocking. Like, but I, it's scary. I get eight and a half hours of sleep now. Like on because the you meditate. I don't know. Oh, that's so fascinating. Okay. I'm going to try it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll do like a, we should little... compare our charts. Like, um, I love that. <laughs> our sleeping charts. And it's crazy. I... Like REM and all the things and the optimizing your sleep patterns and making sure that your circadian rhythm is matched up with like when you're falling asleep and it actually tells you when you're getting downtime. And yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. It now tells me when I'm stressed out as well. So I, was I know like, I just noticed that that's a new thing. 
I, it's got to be new. Like, yeah, well, I've been using the Aura Ring for almost five years now. Holy crap. I have okay. a ton of data on my sleep patterns. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Okay. All right. So, but the, the stress level is a new thing that I just noticed yesterday, actually. So I, 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 I I'm anyway, I, I think that is, I mean, my competitive self is competing against myself. Like how yep. much deep sleep did I get compared to REM? <laughs> but I it know. does affect your ability to handle burnout. You know, yep. if, if you're not sleeping enough, Mm -hmm. Your capacity to handle things is a lot less. Diminished. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Completely. So, I mean, I think as a whole, we wish you the best and the happiest of holidays, obviously, as we go into this um, coming new year, as it's quickly, quickly approaching, as Heather brought up. <laughs> and um, make sure to breathe, drink your water, make time for yourself. Um, put it in your calendar, I would say. Any last words, Miss Heather? No, I think you summed it up perfectly. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. And again, feel free to find us on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, and Apple. So talk to you later and see you next time.